Greetings, ladies and mantle gents, and welcome to this latest edition of Tales, Tales from Outer Space. 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 And as always, I hope that you enjoy. Mutually Assured Destruction, written by Space Paladin 15. Alarms blared and Stellar Command Headquarters, jolting me awake from my first bit of sleep in two days. Alert, unauthorized movement of allied ships detected in the Soul Sector. With a groan, I rolled out of bed and tossed on my officer's jacket. What in the name of Zanx were the humans doing? I thought we had impressed upon them the seriousness of the Rancian threat that the lost joint briefing. Those insolent bipeds were going to get us killed. The Rancians had launched a nuclear strike against one of our military bases a few days ago, reducing it to little more than a radiated rubble. By the time our sensors had detected their stealth bombers, they were already part in our outer bands of each of our systems. The enemy had gotten within close range of our homeworlds and was demanding our unconditional surrender. If we did not comply, they would deploy their nuclear warheads against our civilian populace. We had looked at every option to counter their threats, but it was as though they had predicted all of them. They warned us that any attempt to evacuate our civilians, approach their vessels, or launch a retaliatory strike would result in them glassing our worlds on the spot. We were given three days to agree to their terms. Now, as much as we despised the Rencians, it seemed we had little choice. It was better to be living a vassal state than an extinct civilization. I had noticed that the Terran general seemed agitated when we discussed our plans to surrender, but I chalked it up to the shame of defeat. They did not object openly, but whispered amongst themselves and left the base in a hurry. I suppose they just realized that they were outvoted and decided to act on their own without informing us. Why would they do something so rash? Earth was not exempt from the threat of total annihilation. Perhaps that human death before dishonor mantra was more literal than I thought. My hooves clopped against the metallic floor as I navigated through a series of hallways. The fog of exhaustion clouded my mind, but I tried to snap myself out of it. Everyone was just as tired as me, and as the ranking officer, I was expected to give the orders. As I entered the bridge, my subordinates were already at their stations, and they saluted at the sight of me. Howdy's! I turned my attention to Chief Intelligence Officer Trowell, who was huddled over his computer monitor. Trowell, report. It appears that the Terrans have mobilized the majority of the fleet. They appear to have outfitted their ships with primitive stealth tech, and they've branched out in several directions. Their current trajectories place them on an attack course for the Rancian homeworld and all six of their colonies, Trowell replied. I paused to consider the information. No, the Rancians detected them, unlikely, Admiral. The stealth tech conceals them from long-range detection, but the Rancians will likely spot them upon entry into their system, the same way we have, which is from the faint radioactive signatures emanating from the Terran ships. I sucked in a horrified breath as realization dawned on me. Oh my, thanks, help us. That is not their drive signature. Terran military ships, even the more dated models, have been swapped out fusion drives for antimatter drives, the radiation isn't from their warp core. They must have nuclear weapons aboard. Did the humans really think that charging in, glassing the Rencians was going to save the day? It would only guarantee our destruction. Nothing good could come from provoking them. Images of charred ruins and incinerated flesh flashed before my eyes, knowing that it would be a reality if the Terrans were allowed to complete their stunt. They had to be stopped at all costs. I linked into the navigation systems from my holopad and plugged the stellar coordinates of the Terran's routes, attempting to chart an intercept course that would be futile, the computer determined. They had already entered the warp bubbles and would arrive in minutes. Even if we scrambled our fastest ships, they would still have too much of a head start. There had to be some way to buy time. Perhaps we could talk them down, although it did not appear that the Terran military was listening to reason. Anything was worth a shot at this point. I turned to my communications officer. Get them on comms, Link, immediately. Transmit on the Stellar Command emergency frequency. NCAR pressed a few buttons. 
waited for what felt like an eternity, and then frowned. Sir, I'm afraid the human ships are ignoring our hails. I muttered a few curses under my breath, feeling frustration bubble in my chest. There was absolutely nothing that we could do to affect the situation. We were just as powerless to stop the humans as we had been to stop the Rensians. Time slowed to a crawl as we tracked the fleet's progress on our monitors. The Terran ships signified it by small blips on the star chart. I thought about my family. I thought about resigning my post. I wondered if any of us would still be here in an hour. Watching the markers blink across the screen, parsec by parsec. The feeling that I had failed in my duties to my planet and to stellar command weighed heavily upon me. I should have realized what the humans were up to, but how could I have known? Could anyone have known? The white dots briefly flashed red as the Terran fleet reached the Rentian systems, breaking me out of my thoughts. This was simply our surveillance registering that they had dropped to sublight speeds as they would be necessary for missile launch or a precision bombing run. The enemy surely had noted their presence now that they had left hyperspace. I read over the information we had one last time, looking for an angle. The number of radioactive signatures we detected was a bit concerning. The humans seemed to have enough warheads in tow to rival the Rensian Empire's entire nuclear arsenal. They had to be a computer error. Stellar Command was well aware that the Terrans had nuclear capabilities, but from the version that we had from Earth's history, they had only used them twice in combat. Their nation factions had unified a long time ago, and there had been no detonations other than the occasional tests for many decades. There was no apparent reason why they would have enough nukes to destroy half the galaxy lying around. Then Carl perked up at the listening station. Sir, we've intercepted an outbound communication from the Terran ships. Are they men for us? I asked, a spark of hope glimmering in my mind. Perhaps we can still talk to them down and smooth things over with the Renzians. No, uh, it appears, um, they're directed at the Rensian Command Center. It looks like they're establishing a video chat, she replied. I wondered yet again what the Terrans' play was here. They had showed up armed to the teeth, ignored their allies, and now they wanted to chat with the enemy. The thought crossed my mind that they were trying to switch sides. At least the humans are talking, not going in guns blazing. Put the intercept on screen. I want to hear every word they're saying. A crisply dressed human with close-cropped black hair appeared on the view screen. This is Commander Lucas Novak of the Terran Space Force. We order you to leave any systems occupied by us or our allies at once. His Rensian counterpart clacked its mandibles together, the equivalent of laughter for its species. <laughs> you have some nerve. Now I'll give you that. But if you don't leave at once, we'll make good on our threat. Our nukes are armed and ready. Mine. Do it, the human said with a shrug. But our nukes are ready too. And man, I'd love to see the fires of hell rain down on your world. The second this ship loses contact with Earth, we make sure the people of your empire never see another sunrise either. That's just stupid, the Renzian shrieked. Nobody wins if we're all dead. Commander Novak seemed unfazed. That's the idea. Mutually assured destruction. The Rensian paused for a moment, considering the situation. I see that we're at an impasse. I suppose that we could agree to a temporary ceasefire. We will withdraw our ships if you'll do the same. Very well. The call was aborted, and I stared at the blank screen in disbelief. Had the Rensians really just agreed to stand down? The humans' entire strategy had been to ignore the threat against their planet and counter it with their own. I needed to speak with them, if nothing else, to understand why they would risk their species' existence. Trow, hail the Terran vessels again, I ordered. This time the humans answered in a matter of seconds. Commander Novak rematerialized on screen, grinning from ear to ear. Your species disobeyed a direct imperative from Stella, I began. Commander Novak's smile grew wider as he interrupted. You're welcome. I couldn't help but smile a little myself. Okay, that all worked out. But what if it didn't? How did you know that I would stand down? 
that you wouldn't just end up trading nuclear punches. The Rensians are arrogant, but not stupid. Nobody wants to have their entire species wiped off the map, their entire civilization turned to dust. We just had to make them understand that there would be no winners in such a war. And that's why you have so many nukes. I suppose so. If anyone tries to get off humanity, as the last thing we do as a species, we'll make sure that we take them with us. End of story. The algorithm reckons you should be watching this video next, and I recommend that you should be always watching my video. So, click it, click With energy! And yes, clicking that does help the channel. Thank you very much. I would just like to give a quick thanks to the T5 channel members and patrons. Alithia, Parky, Feudic Yol, Meridian117, Cam Maxwell, Casper Arnholtz, Angry Marine, Lord Azrakal, and White Van 420 